Hey there, welcome back to the DFS Build MLB Edition. I'm Kevin Roberts, joined with Taylor Smith. We've been away for two weeks again, a nice hiatus, but we are back for this Friday slate. A little bit of a tiny one for Friday to see six games on the schedule. There are actually more games before this, but we are doing just the main slate for those who want to prepare well ahead of time. All right, so Taylor, we got the first game, Boston visiting the Orioles. We got Corbin Burns on the mound for the O's, and on the other side, we have Cooper Criswell for Boston. Um, Right away, I guess Corbin Burns would stand out here. I think he is viable, even though I don't... I guess the 9.7K price tag isn't that bad. And for this slate, he definitely stands out as one of the better options. The only problem is uh, Boston can be a bit problematic. If we look at everything here, 198 ISO um, and not like a super, super scary K rate. But I actually don't mind Burns here. Um, As far as the offenses, actually, I think the wind is blowing out. It is blowing out to the left, so... I think the offenses are totally viable here, but I, I mean, given the slate, it's tough to get away from Burns here. How are you feeling? Yeah, I like Burns a good amount. He, as of now, obviously it's 7.51 a.m. Pacific time, so uh, a lot of time between now and lock, but he's my third highest exposed pitcher on the slate. Um, Boston strikes out a little more than average, so it's a good spot, even though Burns isn't what he used to be in terms of K's, like he's not the 30% or 35% guy he was uh, in Milwaukee, but good pitcher, good enough spot. The ballpark downgrade for the Red Sox offense makes me like him a little bit. I'm getting to zero Chris Well, and these are the two lowest uh, owned offenses for me personally on the entire slate, which is uh, a little bit surprising. I thought if I wasn't getting Chris Well, I would get to the O's, but as of now, that is not really the case. Not very comfortable either, but kind of is what it is. Yeah, I think like r- the Red Sox as a mild uh, leverage stack is okay if the Burns ownership ticks up quite a bit. Right now it's at like 24%, which obviously is kind of chalky. But um, for this for this slate, I don't think I would be going away from Burns based off of ownership alone. I just think if you're entering a lot of lineups, maybe a couple of Boston lineups make sense. Uh, but I'm with you. Not really super interested in the bats despite the wind blowing out. I think Burns is just not a guy I want to pick on really with the Boston offense. Um, and then Baltimore is fine, especially with the wind blowing out. Um, but really, I would just not really get to Chriswell personally. That would be the way I'd approach that. I think we're in agreement there for the most part. Uh, next up, we have Miami and the Mets. We have uh, Rodery Munoz. Munoz? Munoz. Munoz. He's taking on the Mets. And we have uh, Sean Manaya taking on the Marlins. Obviously, Manaya is going to pop here. I believe he's the highest owned pitcher of the slate. 39% ownership. Yep. So I don't like the ownership, but obviously the Marlins uh, look good. They don't supply much power. They strike out enough for the matchup to be uh, appealing for him. Good park factor in the pitching, uh, both pitchers' favor. Uh, but I kind of lean – the thing I like the most here is actually the Mets offense. I, th- I don't think Munoz is very scary. He has major issues with left-handed hitters, and they have a lot of decent lefties to throw at him. Collective 175 ISO against right-handed pitching as well. Um, but, yeah, Manaya looks good, uh, especially for this slate at 8.7K. Totally fine. I don't mind getting to him. But if he's going to be that chalky, I don't really want to stack Marlins, but I think if he's going to be that chalky, I'm probably going to be a little bit underweight on him. Yeah, it's not comfortable. He has been quite good this year for what it's worth. Um, not last game. <laughs> well, all year he's been good. I know, so. I know. <laughs> Miami's lineup is also fucking trash. Their lineup has a 108 ISO, a 260 Woba, and a 22% strikeout rate against lefties. So not, not a good. huge strikeout stu- uh, matchup, but they're very not threatening. So, right. And he's cheap. He's 8,700. So on a slate with kind of sus pitching, I don't think he's a bad play at all. Um, he's my highest home pitcher right now. I'm a little bit concerned about how few Mets stacks I have because Munoz is also terrible uh, pretty much in every way. So I'd like to get more of the Mets. Like between the Orioles and the Mets, those two good offenses, I'm a little bit worried about being under on. I would rather get to the Mets than the Orioles, but uh, the park isn't great for hitting. The Mets do still have a high total regardless, so... Uh, I do like the Mets in spite of what my current lineups say, and obviously I'm not getting to Munoz or the Marlins at all. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I I would agree also to like bump up the exposure to the Mets. I don't know. The Mets just look really, really good here. They could go classic Mets and do absolutely nothing. 
but they look like a really good stack. Um, and to be clear, I'm with you. Mania looks really good on this slate. I just, if he's going to be mega chalk, I'm probably going to be a little bit underweight. So I don't get completely hosed if he craters. Um, uh, next up, we got Rangers taking on the twins. Simeon Woods Richardson battles Texas. I don't think that's really good for him. And then we have Andrew Heaney taking on the twins. Um, I don't really want either pitcher here. I think Heaney is 7.4, Woods Richardson 6.9. That's not alluring enough for me. Um, the twins look pretty decent against Heaney, who historically has major issues against righties. Uh, 165 ISO to righties on the year. So better than he has been uh, technically, but the twins are pretty good against lefties. Um, and then also, I mean, Texas, I feel like Texas is always overlooked. Um, usually their bad. lefties are, huh? It's Cause they're bad. Well, still they have, they always have potential though. They should be better than they are. I mean, they have a lot of good players. Uh, that said, uh, Woods Richardson does not give up much power from the left side. And that's kind of where you're going outside of like, uh, you know, Adalas Garcia. Um, so I don't know. I, I think the twins are who I'd be looking at here. I'm not that interested in the pitching. I agree. I have a dusting of both pitchers, but not enough to make them really worth the mention. I think Heaney's pretty good. He's kind of like Manaya, like a volatile pitcher over the years. who's performed well this season, but he does have a home run issue historically. Fly ball guy from the left side. Minnesota has a lot of righty power between Lewis, Santana, Jeffers, Willie Castro, even uh, Manuel Margo, if you want to throw him in there. Jose Miranda's not really hit well this season, but over the past couple of years, he's been pretty good. So it is not an easy spot, even with Buxton unavailable. Um, do have a good amount of interest in the Twins, but that's really it. Um Woods Richardson is kind of average. The Rangers are kind of average. Like Seeger, Simeon, maybe Josh Smith is like a mini stack is okay. But in terms of fully stacking Texas, um, not really getting there so far today. Yeah, I don't know how it's going to actually shake out. But right now, the Twins have a projected lineup with eight righties. I mean, that's including switch hitters, obviously, but they would be batting from the right side. So... Even if you don't like the Twins, I think that would be enough to get me off of Heaney just because he's going to face a lot of guys that the splits aren't very favorable for him. Uh, but I will I will agree. Both these pitchers are cheap. So if you don't like the other cheap guys that we're going to end up talking about, they're in play just because it's not a huge slate. All right. Uh, Cleveland going to Milwaukee to take on the Brewers. We have Gavin Williams, who is a talented pitcher, taking on Milwaukee, who – is inconsistent at best and forever without Christian Yelich because he's now out for the year. Um, and then on the other side, Aaron Savali takes on the Guardians. I Revenge. mean, <laughs> yeah, I actually kind of like the Guardians here. Um, maybe they'll take out their revenge on him for leaving. I don't know. Um, but he hasn't been good against lefties. 205 ISO against lefties, 351 Woba. 57.1% hard hit rate against lefties. So he's been pretty good with the Milwaukee since being traded there. And they just tend to get the best out of their pitchers. Um, but, you know, I think the guardians look pretty good here by the numbers. I think that's where I would go. If I'm targeting this game, um, I think Gavin Williams is okay. What's his price at 6.6. I think at 6.6 Gavin Williams is an okay value play. Um, how's he been doing lately? 19 plus fantasy points in three of his last four games. So the form is good. The park isn't that scary as you've noted numerous times this year it used to be, but it just hasn't been lately. Uh, so Gavin Williams at 6.6 is fine. And I do like the guardians here. Yeah, I think he's an okay cheapy. I could see him being kind of popular as a result. Um, sure. Cause he is a pretty good pitcher. He's better than that price tag would indicate. Um, but if he is, I think stacking Milwaukee is pretty interesting too. They've been excellent of late offensively and really all year they've been pretty good even though i constantly talk shit about them because they're your team but i will admit that they have been pretty good against righties in particular uh from a power standpoint tyler black being there i think he's pretty cheap so that could be helpful if he's hitting pretty high in the lineup um both offenses look good i'm not really getting to uh Sabali. the guardians are just a low strikeout lineup he's not a great striker guy to begin with uh, Cleveland is pretty lefty heavy as well. I think mm -hmm. like seven or six or seven in the projected lineup. Yeah. Um, 
So both offenses intrigue me. I think Williams is a fine cheapie, and Savali is not on my radar. Yeah, and by the way, I just checked the ownership again. I didn't know this, but Gavin Williams is like 25% owned right now. So yeah, I like him fine, and it's mostly a price play at 6.6K. But if he's going to be that owned, absolutely a sprinkling of the Brewers makes a lot of sense here. Um, okay, so White Sox and Astros, Spencer Argetti, my the bane of my existence. I had some props going against him the other day, and he just absolutely shredded. Well, how'd that go? 40 fantasy points, 13 strikeouts against Boston. I stacked up the Red Sox. The wind was blowing out at Fenway, and he had the game of his freaking life, which, by the way, followed up a 12 strikeout game the week or or the start before. So this dude is feeling it. He has 19 plus fantasy points in like four of his last five starts, 31 plus fantasy points in each of his last two. Gosh dang it. I I guess I like Spencer Arrighetti here. Um, Don't really want to but he is facing the white Sox. And he's only eight and a half k and the pitching slate isn't that appealing so uh let's see is he gonna be chalky yes yes of course so i guess that would be the reason to sour on him a little bit but i don't really care that much the white Sox are not scary he's not that expensive he's been amazing fire up our Getty, i guess i would leverage with maybe a sprinkling of white socks, but I don't even really want to do that. I think if the ownership spikes and gets out of control, you could entertain going underweight, but I think he's just a good play. He's undoubtedly a good play. He's also undoubtedly going to be really mega chalk on this slate. I could see him being like 50% owned in some contests just because the week slate, he's pretty affordable and he's facing the white socks and his game logs are good. And he's a good pitcher overall. I think Um, this is the classic scenario though where I'm going to be just playing heavily both sides of it. As of now, he's my highest on pitcher, and the White Sox are my highest on stack. So mm. that always that's goes not well. fun at all. <laughs> <laughs> I have him in about 53% of my lineups, and I have about 34% White Sox stacks. So that's just about everything. As, something As you would say up. to me, you're spreading yourself a little too thin there. I don't think so. I mean, I like, mean, well, Arigetti, if you're going to commit, if you're going to commit 64 40. to Arigetti, I would just get off the White Sox or go way less. But obviously, the ownership, you know, demands it or, or could end up demanding because I think he's going to go up higher than the 25 that we're seeing right now he's for all the reasons you said: box score watching, price, yeah. White Sox. So there's no aces on this slate like Corbin Burns and right. Crochet, but Crochet's limited. Yeah. By the way, on the other side of this game, why the why is Crochet 9.3k? He doesn't even play that much. Yeah, his pitch count's way low. He hasn't been very good lately. I think he's probably fatigued a little bit. Um, I would like to give him a shot in tournaments, but I can't because there's you can't trust his pitch count at all, and the matchup sucks. So yeah, you're not really would, getting anything out of playing him, so you can't really play him. I do think no, there's no leverage Houston really. Him. There's no upside. No, but Houston's also a pretty good lineup, so I do think Houston in this spot is intriguing. Um. Yeah, they have decent power numbers, decent overall numbers against lefties, so I don't mind that. And the White Sox have the worst bullpen in the sport behind them, so if they get to crochet, they get several innings against a bunch of jokesters out of the bullpen. So Houston looks okay. But yeah, I think the Arigetti thing, like he's the obvious SP1, and that I just think makes the White Sox a very obvious tournament stack, too, that's just not gonna it always it. does though this happens like every freaking slate there's one dude who's like mega chuck. Well, he's not mega chuck mania is right now but there's one dude that looks like i can't miss like okay maybe i won't play mania but i'm definitely playing Arigetti. and then he gets absolutely shelled right it's happening it yeah it does like dylan sees against the marlins a week ridiculous or so ago. ridiculous I think, um, I think Arigetti is going to be higher on than mania once we actually get to the slate um They'll both be chalky, but I would take Arigetti to be more popular because I think people just want to pick on the White Sox more than the Marlins. Plus, Arigetti is a better strikeout pitcher to begin with. I can definitely see, I can definitely see the White Sox loading them up and hitting like a grand slam right away, and just our night being over before before we get started. I'm playing the White Sox, so that's true well Well, now now that we've talked about it, I'm probably going to up my exposure to the White Sox as well. Just they haven't because... been that bad lately either. Like they've been okay ish. Not that recent game logs matter very much, but okay. Let's just not like that horrible on paper. Okay. But let's just offer a little clarity here. This is a tournament strategy. In yeah. reality, 
Arrieta is a really good play, and the White Sox yeah. are not a team we can trust at all. The only no. reason why we entertain these things is because of ownership and because because baseball. Because baseball just shit happens that shouldn't happen all the time. So that is the approach there. By the way, I'm with you on the Astros. I don't trust Crochet to be good, and I don't trust him to last very long. And by the way, they have a 16% K rate. What the hell is that? This is Padres level of not striking out. So that for years, like they've always been. No, well, they haven't been this good all year, though. They started horribly at the start of the season. Oh, yeah. I've been in terms of strikeouts for years. They've been very. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. But I just mean like. For like a good portion of the year, they were like probably middle of the pack, and now they're like back to being elite, which is annoying. Another thing about the White Sox is that they're cheap. Like Robert and Vaughn are over 4K, but uh, Sheets is the only other hitter in the projected lineup over 3K. So you can pretty much stack the White Sox with whoever you want. If you want the Padres and Coors, if you want the Dodgers, if you want the Braves, if you want the Rockies even, Houston. It's pretty easy to stack Chicago and then get a really expensive and good primary stack. By the way, they do have five lefties in the projected lineup. So I think, yeah. So you could definitely work in some of those lefties with Luis Robert and then, I don't know, Andrew Vaughn or something, or, or Gavin, I don't know, Gavin Sheets is a lefty, but yeah, Andrew Vaughn or something. And then you just pick the three lefties you feel the best about or whatever, you know, your system pops out. But it's not like Argetti is immune to getting shredded. He has had some really bad games on the year. So, anyways, I think we're good on that one. Um, all right, so Dodgers uh, look like the offense with the most upside on this slate just because they're the Dodgers and they're healthy and they're also facing Miles uh, Michaelis. Um, not really a good hitter's park, so there's that. And then possibly stack ownership. There is a Coors game, so I'm hopeful that the Dodgers won't be like mega owned and they're also, you know, expensive. But obviously, look, they look amazing. Um, don't really have to give a big sales pitch there. I just don't want any Michael. Um, uh, Michaelis and I really like the Dodgers on the other side I guess is it Robleski I don't really know anything about him all I do know is he's been like okay in like four starts and he's 6.5k against the Cardinals in a decent pitcher park so I, I don't hate him at 6.5k and I don't have a lot of interest in the Cardinals in general so that's kind of where I'm there I'm mostly just Dodgers and avoid everything else here are you on the same wavelength or are you thinking something else um so it looks like Robaleski might be a little owned because he's in the same price as Gavin Williams, price tier as Gavin Williams. Um, and like you said, he's not bad. He's been okay. Strikeouts haven't really been there, though, which is kind of concerning. I do have interest in the Cardinals if Robaleski is going to be chalky. Um, it's really not a bad lineup, especially against lefties with Tommy Pham in there, Jordan Walker's back. It's pretty righty-heavy. Um, it's not very expensive either. So if Robaleski is going to be popular, I think the Cardinals make sense. Obviously, the Dodgers are always good now that they have Mookie back. They look a lot better. They're also more expensive as a result, but Michaelis isn't missing bats. They have a high total. Uh, even Gavin Lux is kind of hitting now. So pretty deep lineup, obviously a great stack. They're not going to look as good as the Padres because of Coors, but certainly never any qualms with getting to them. Agreed. All right. Speaking of the Padres, we got the Padres visiting the Rockies at Coors Field. Matt Waldron takes on the Rockies. Uh, he was really good at the start of the year, has not been quite as good lately. Cal Quantrill takes on the Padres on the other side. Obviously, the Padres look awesome here. Uh, Quantrill is walking lefties at almost a 12% clip. He's given up a 196 ice to the lefties, gives up power to both sides. So I think the Padres look awesome. Uh, you don't need to you don't need a big sales pitch there. Obviously, with a massive park rate upgrade, Coors has the best park factor in the league. Uh, only issue would be they're going to be chalky. So do you want to eat the Padres chalk, or how do you want to play that? Uh, and then the other side, you do have the Rockies, who, despite being in Coors Field, because they're the Rockies, they're going to be uh, less, a lot less owned than the Padres and probably just not that owned in general, uh, especially with the Dodgers in a good spot, too. So I think Matt Waldron is fine. Uh, what's his price here? 78 yeah, so at 7.8 against the Rockies, I think it's fine. I just don't really like to go out of my way to target anybody playing in Coors personally. So um, I, I love the Padres. It's just if if I go under own there, it would just be purely ownership based. But everybody else and Rockies are OK, but I'm pretty much just Padres. Yeah, they have like a six and a half total, which is easily the highest on the slate. Yeah. Um, 
don't really need to make a case for them. I'm probably going to be underweight just because that's kind of usually what happens with the road team and Coors, but no qualms with them, obviously, on paper. Colorado, I think, is good, too. They are always under-owned relative to the road team in Coors because they're not as good, but uh, Waldron's a knuckleballer. There's no telling how that's going to play at elevation and all that. And It's not like Waldron's an ace. Like He's pretty good, but this Colorado lineup is not terrible either. They have decent amounts of power, even if they're not the most imposing group. Um, it's just cores. You can always stack any team of cores, Rockies included. And I'm not really getting into the pitching, which is not uh, not a shock. No. All right, last game of the night, we got the Braves visiting the Angels. Spencer Schwellenbach takes on the Halos. That looks like a pretty appealing matchup for him. Only thing with him that I don't like is that he is the most expensive pitcher on the slate at 9.8K. He has been good. He is a talented player. Um, and the matchup isn't bad. I think just as a price point, I would probably be looking to do other things. And then Jose Soriano takes on the Braves. Um, this is in, yeah, LA. So this is a, a good park for hitting. So I don't, re- another reason why I don't really want to go after Schwellenbach, I'd be a little bit more interested in pivoting to Burns and or doing a sprinkling of uh, Halo stacks. But I really like the Braves here. The Braves are the team I target. Um, they grade out pretty well, 165 ISO. They do strike out a bit. Obviously, they're not as uh, scary without Acuna in there. But uh, Soriano is definitely a guy you can get to, um, and the park doesn't help him any. So I think the Braves are the offense on target here, and I'm not that inter- interested in the pitching. In a vacuum, Schwalenbach is good, but I don't like the price or the situation that much. I think the matchup looks really good, actually. Like, I know he's probably overpriced, but he does have a 34% strikeout rate against righties, and the Angels have seven righties in the projected lineup. Most of them are terrible, Anthony Rendon being one of them. Rendon's actually one of the lower strikeout hitters, but he's just not threatening. He's not going to hit a home run or anything like that. So, what happened there? Overall, probably net gain to see him in the lineup. So, even with his salary being what it is, I think Schwellenbach by default, is one of the best pitching options on the board and someone I will get to quite a bit. Um, Soriano, not really interested. He's kind of overpriced. Strikeout stuff's not amazing. Atlanta is my second highest on stack as of now. Like you said, it's a good part for hitting. Great lineup. Even without Acuna, they do have Michael Harris back, which is a boost. So lots to like about the Atlanta side of this game and nothing to like about the Angels side. That's fair. Uh, by the way, Rendon has zero home runs on the year. I know he's been he's injured. He's not going to hit a home run. Like he doesn't have any power anymore. He's I know he's been hurt, but how? How do you have just absolutely zero power? And by the way, if you're not going to hit for power, maybe you don't have a 235 batting average. Maybe be a little bit better as a hitter. God, he's, he's mega washed. Is there a more washed That's hitter in baseball doing. right now? Uh, there might be, but there's no one um, as washed as him. That's as rich as him. I don't think. That that is definitely true. Okay, that's gonna do it for us. Thanks for tuning in here. If we helped you at all, please give this video a like and also give us a subscribe so you get alerted to future videos. Uh, we wish you luck. Tune in next time.